Greetings from the Pacific coast of California. In our videos about local beaches, we mostly show shells and bits of dead stuff washed out from the ocean. But this time, we want to focus on live creatures. They are really cool. Take this red giant. It's a mollusk with the common name gumboot, or giant western fiery chitin. Some people called it wandering meatloaf. Creature has tiny but multiple metallic teeth to scrape the algae of the rocks, and it can be several decades old. When threatened, this gumboot chitin rolls itself into a ball with the size of a melon or a cantaloupe. Chitons have armored plates on their backs, but in case of the gumboot, the plates are completely hidden under the tough skin. If you see it lying on the beach downside up, do not even think of touching it with bare hands. They will stink badly for a few days. This armored plate, which is often called the butterfly shell, is all that is left from the dead gumboot chitin after hermit crabs consumed the rest. Time to touch the yucky stuff! Eee! Sea anemone is supposed to hide its tentacles, waiting for the high tide. This is a sea star. Tiny. It has six legs and sticks to fingers. Beautiful by the wind sailor. Storms and currents sometimes bring it here from tropical waters. This one is still alive, but thousands can be washed on the shores and dry out under the sun. Watch the limpet trying to make its way pushing black turban snails. Limpets are territorial. They like to graze the algae on their own patch. Rest assured, all invaders will be bulldozered off the limpet's private property. A nudibranch is a mollusk, and it's a relatively rare treat for tide poolers here. This one has a bunch of gills sticking out of its rear end. Those things on the head that look like horns are called rhinophores, and they are sensory tentacles mostly to smell and taste. In this particular species of nudibranchs, rhinophores can be retracted and hidden under the mantle. Nudibranchs hunt anemones, corals, sea sponges, and use their pigments and toxins for coloration, as well as for protection from predatory fish. By the way, sea anemones are known to be able to detach themselves from the rocks when in danger, being attacked by a sea star or by a nudibranch. They wiggle away from the old place and can attach to a new rock. It seems that this one was trying to do just that, but got picked up by the waves and ended up on the beach. We will put it back into the water. In case you did not know how live abalone looks like, here you go. It has a huge, powerful muscle and numerous tiny black tentacles around the mantle. Bits of abalone shells are easy to spot among the pebbles. However, if you are lucky enough to beat the crowds and get there in the morning, you may even find a couple of whole shells. Crabs are funny to watch, especially mole crabs. They hide in the sand, and all you can see is tiny black holes. Once on the surface, they will try to dig into the sand, and they do it really, really fast. They have to because there are many seashore birds hunting them down. This is a snowy egret with an unfortunate mole crab. Sad, but the bird also has to eat. On the sandy beaches between Los Angeles and San Diego, you can also see these amazing clams that, like mole crabs, live in the splash zone and can dig into the sand very fast. Every one of these shells seems to have a unique coloration. So many shells and the shells are moving! Are... Oh my gosh, the shells are moving!
Sometimes terrestrial creatures like this shiny beetle are blown into the water by the wind. This one was lucky that we were nearby and came to the rescue. The common name of this scarab beetle is June bug. This is an itty bitty lalella, or by the wind sailor. The bright red bugs have four pairs of legs, so my guess is that they are some kind of ticks, perhaps bloodsuckers who like harbor seals or sea lions for breakfast. Ugh. It can be a bit unnerving to watch them crawling on the wet algae when you are exploring tide pools barefoot. Some anemones have spectacular bright colors. Now, a little bit of marine life from the San Francisco Bay. Bat rays do the regular rounds along the shores in Redwood City. They feed on small crabs and mollusks hiding in the sea grass. The tail of a bat ray has venomous spine, which Ray uses to fight off the attackers. At one point, bat rays were fished vigorously because they were thought to be responsible for eating oysters, but was later shown that the main culprit is actually crabs which are hunted by rays. So the effect was the opposite of what they expected. Do your research before you blame somebody. This little guy got stuck and we dig out the larger hole for him to have more water for breathing and hiding from shorebirds. Sometimes even harbor seals go deep into the city through the pipes connecting the canals. Thanks for watching and for subscribing. See you next time for another weekend adventure in the San Francisco Bay Area. Good luck!